I'm gonna go to file, open. I'm gonna, I need to work from my reference to start out with. And I wanna use this uh, animated GIF of uh, Robert Smith. He's just gonna be kind of like spinning around in a circle. And I'm gonna draw like the outline of him and uh, every frame and then I'll make like a GIF or an MP4 out of it. But as far as your references go, you can either use a GIF or an MP4, but it has to be like something that's, you know, moving. And whenever you're in Photoshop, you don't necessarily like see all this, uh, what's going on yet. But our layers over here is uh, really interesting because I loaded up this GIF and it goes from one to 42 frames. Each one of those layers is a frame, but we want to look at this in a more particular way. Uh, and we're going to do that by looking at a timeline. And you can get there by going to Window and Timeline. And once I click on that, we're going to have this extra window that kind of like pops up. And here it's showing every single frame within that uh, animation. I'm going to close After Effects really quick. Okay. Uh, now, I don't necessarily want to see it from this point of view. There's a couple different views that you can see it in. I want to convert this to a video timeline. So you do that by going into the upper right of that window, the little sandwich stack, click on that, then go to Convert to Video Timeline. And once I do that, it uh, changes things where it has all of my frames like stacked up uh, on top of each other, but it's still going to be, uh, you know, moving nicely. Next part that I'm going to do is I don't want to. If I do this frame by frame, it'll be you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like that's a lot going on. I want to change the frame rate of this, so I'll have to, you know, I'll draw fewer frames, and uh, hopefully it'll be a little bit more fluid. Uh, obviously, the more frames that you draw with it, the more fluid the animation is. Uh, I think we talked a little bit about, like, I don't know, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, where uh, they did kind of an interesting thing where, you know, whenever Spider-Man is kind of, uh, doing his thing and then the, the young kid uh, they're at different frame rates from each other the one is more smooth and then the other one's a little bit more choppy it's a subtle difference but uh, that's what frame rates can kind of do for you if you lower the frame rate it doesn't necessarily make it bad it just changes the speed so what I'm gonna do is hit that sandwich stack again and then I'm gonna set the timeline frame rate and instead of a, a 30 FPS, I'm just going to change this to maybe like 12. I'm going to press OK. And that just cut down our uh, frames a little bit. It's still doing the same thing, but it's just going to be a little bit less. OK. Uh, next thing I want to do is uh, make a new layer that I can draw on top of. So I'm going to do that by going to Layer. And let's see. Should be like a new video layer. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to leave it on this screen for a second. You go to layer, video layers, and then new blank video layer. And this blank video layer is where you're going to be doing your entire drawing on. And uh, if anyone has questions, let me know, because uh, we'll be kind of moving through it a little fast. Okay, so there's my new blank video layer. Uh, what happened with that, I was like one frame in. Whenever I made it, it started it there. So I want to have it match up with everything else. I'm going to push that over. And this might confuse people, too. See how this is like a little bit over? Uh, this is where math gets involved. Uh, 
I don't know how many frames this is off the top of my head, but uh, this animation or this GIF only has so many frames to it. And with my frames per second, that doesn't necessarily line up with my frames that I actually have. So there will be like little tiny indiscrepancies like that. Okay. Uh, next, I want to do like my drawing part. Now, uh, we could do this a few different ways. We could paint on top of it or we could... Uh, you know, do our line drawing. Or, uh, Brittany, are you trying to say something? Uh, no, I don't know why I would uh, act up like that. Okay, no big deal. So, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pencil tool. You could use the brush. Uh, I want to use the pencil tool because it makes like a hard pixel edge. I want to be able to use that pixel edge for... Uh, filling in my colors at some point. Whenever you use the brush, it makes like a dithering effect where it'll be harder to fill in, but uh, it'll look nicer in the end whenever you do that. But I'm just going to use the pencil tool. That's all you have to do too. So I'm going to start at the very beginning here. I'm just going to do a quick kind of uh, tracing of him. I'm going to set my brush size to one or two. I'm going to set this to one. Oops. Alright. So I think I want to kind of make his shirt a separate part of it or something. Keep messing this up. doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, but uh, you know, getting it close is kind of nice. Okay. All right, now I'm going to get his legs. And hand-eye coordination isn't necessarily on today. Okay, so there's frame one. Uh, I'm going to move this over to frame two, and then I'm going to do another uh, outline. And let me know if you have any questions. I'm just going to try to move through this. I'm kind of over embellishing his hair. Okay. There's frame one, frame two. I'm going to go to frame three. Caleb, do you say you, you've done some of this before already? Yeah, that's actually all I've ever been doing. So what you're doing right now is just kind of, you know, just looking like every day for me. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I haven't latched on oh, to it. Or what were you saying? I've done it to where, I mean, it's a similar thing. The only thing I've seen that you've done different is you just stretch the layer out, like layer 43 out above all of them. Mm -hmm. I'd have little like one frame layers stacked next to each other. But wow, okay. I guess I'd, that was easier for like, cause then I'd go in and paint under those layers, like doing the coloring. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, everything's pretty much the same though. 
Yeah, so Caleb has been using Photoshop for uh, his animations for a while, which, uh, you know, Photoshop is fine to use. I was originally going to have you do this in After Effects, but, like, I wanted to give you this option, too, since we've already been kind of using After Effects. Uh, Photoshop also has, like, 3D, like, modeling capabilities, too, if you didn't know. Like, it's kind of all over the place. Okay, I might just do a few more than kind of, like, end it uh, a little bit prematurely. Because I don't want to have to do every single frame on here. And I think a helpful tool, like, if you're... Because I did some, um, like, I filmed myself, but those videos were in, like, 30 FPS. Mm -hmm. So I had a, like, converter that would convert it to 12 seconds because I've been using a 12-second frame rate, and that's, like, helped a lot in that stretch. Oh, okay. So uh, just changing the frame rate inside of here uh, wasn't as helpful? Yeah, it was, like, when I would, when I would change the frame rate in that or – it would, I don't know, sometimes it would speed the video up since the frame rate from the original, I don't know. So I got to the point where I was just like, I'll just prefer the, like the matching frame rates and that would just take away a lot of headaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, is it just doing this thing that it's doing right there? Because that's just like a, a math uh, thing where it's trying to find a common denominator. Yeah, I don't know. I would get through a drawing, yeah, and it would, like, I'd get through, like, because I mainly use the, the trace method for just, like, some stuff with the mouse or maybe, like, the little walk cycle I did, but everything else is just kind of eyeballing it. But, yeah, I'd get through a whole thing, and then I'd realize it's, like, too fast, and the whole thing would get really sticky and stuff like that, and so now I just, like, change the frame rate, and it takes the headaches out. Mm-hmm. But I, I could feel you, though, when you were saying um, they take the live action reference and then they convert it to their character design mm -hmm. because, like, the little walk was just my legs, but having to turn it into, like, tiny, skinny little cockroach legs was pretty, like, difficult. Yeah, but, and that's where the real kind of genius comes in is not so much the animation, but it's the translation <laughs> of the two different things, you know? Uh, Caleb's been working on an uh, animation that maybe uh, you can share with us uh, soon. So I'm curious how it's all getting put together. Yeah, I've still been I've still been working on it and and whatnot, but um, I'm about 40 seconds into it, and it's probably going to be about two and a half to three <laughs> minutes. So, yeah. but I can share a little bit of the first part sometime. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, keep hitting that button on my pen tool. All right, uh, I I'm about halfway through this, so you can kind of see about the amount of time that it takes. Like, this has just been like what five minutes or something of just tracing, uh, but I have that so far. What I want to do is, uh, I'll save this as, let's call this robertsmith.psd. If I save it as a, if I save it as a PSD format, it's going to keep like all that stuff. So that's good. I'm going to put this away. Okay. So the next part I want to do is, uh, I want to get rid of like the background. So, I could do this a few different ways. Maybe I'm going to make a new group. And I want to put, like, all these video layers in the same thing. Gosh, it's going so slow. All right. So, I'm going to click that layer, hold shift, and click this bottom layer. I'm going to stick all these inside that group. And I can hide that group and I can kind of see what my 
animations doing so far. Okay. I'm gonna bring, that's my last frame here. So I'm just gonna bring this in for now. I might end up just kind of taking all this stuff and bringing it to that. I'll save this as like something different. I might end up uh, just deleting that layer because I'm gonna export this as something else. So I'm gonna call this uh, Robert Smith 2. And I'm gonna add a new layer inside of here. I can do that from uh, my layers panel over here. I'm just gonna make a regular layer instead of a video one. I'm gonna stick it behind this one because I wanna make a background for it. I'm just gonna make a black background. Okay, so you can see there's a black background and then here's my uh, line drawing on top of that. Uh, and then there's that. I'm gonna delete that so then it's just like my animation here. I'm gonna save this as Robert Smith, uh, but no ref, so then I know that that's the one that I deleted the reference and I don't necessarily want that because I wanna finish that animation at some point. So uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I need to export this. I can do a few different ways. If I wanna make a GIF, uh, I will do file export and then save for web legacy. I'm gonna pause here just for a second. Whenever I click on that, I have all these options to work with here. Uh, since I'm working with like that pencil tool and it's making more of that pixely edge, uh, I think just by default, whenever you're on the screen, it'll have your uh, this on diffusion. I wanna set it to no dither. Uh, all that means is like the pixels that you're working with, if it's dithering, it's going to like have them fade out on the edges, like just softly. Whenever there's no dither, it's gonna be like hard edge. Uh, second thing is there's a few different options that you can export this as a GIF. Uh, the first is optimize and two up, four up, and original. I want to go to original because that's going to be the highest quality. You can see the difference here where it kind of gives you an idea of like what it'll look like exported. This is going to be seven kilobytes and two seconds long. This is going to be 209 kilobytes. So, uh, it's about 200% more uh, space that it takes up, but it's gonna be higher quality. Uh, over here, just wanna make sure that GIF is selected, and then uh, I'm gonna go to save. And then I'm just gonna call this Coke, Zach, and that and then it should export, and I should be able to view it. So this is like the little animation that I have so far. I wanna do something else with it, or if I wanted to export it as a video, I could go to File, Export, and then Render Video. Uh, same thing here, uh, you can just play around with the formats. H.264 will make it an MP4. Uh, the reason why you might want to do it as a video is uh, like things like Instagram, they don't play like GIFs necessarily. You would have to make it an MP4. So, you know, format, all this other stuff looks good. Uh, this here where it says the range, uh, I got rid of like that reference thing earlier because I didn't want it to mess around with my range. Uh, I could be a little bit more specific there and keep my reference, but I just wanted to keep it nice and easy. I'll go to render. Okay. I 
actually not sure where that's saved. What's an intro? That'll give you the path where it's at. Here, save in this folder, and here it is in uh, the MP4 format. I want to do one more thing with this, and this might be kind of important. Like, let's say I want to get rid of this uh, black background layer. I could keep this transparent too. So I want to go to File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. I'm going to make sure I go to Original. I'm going to save this. I'm going to just say that that's transparent, so then I know. I'm going to go to After Effects. What if I open up my uh, Man A piece again? go here. This is the new transparent export. I'm going to grab this and drag it into my assets. And then I can drag this down onto my timeline. And then I'm able to kind of work with that over here. Okay. And then go to preview. And then I'm able to kind of keep that transparent part. Now, since it's like kind of short, I can copy that and paste it. I'll put these back to back. Anyway, so that's one way of doing it. Uh, like that one uh, student did, she was uh, working with like the paint dabs. Like if this is something that uh, might might be like a little portfolio piece even, so you might want to spend like a little bit of time with it. Uh, you could do something similar to that where instead of uh, the line drawing, you're doing the paint dab part. I think eventually we'll do something that's cell shaded like this and maybe has some line parts to it too. Because I kind of want to try to make an anime version of like yourself in a way or a friend. But the first thing I want you to do is just uh, get used to the process. And by that, I want you to make a, an interesting rotoscope animation. Uh, so you'll kind of search for different GIFs that you might want to work off of or different videos. Uh, the main thing I want you to think about whenever you're choosing these is like something that's repeatable that kind of uh, goes on forever uh, just so it's not awkward whenever it stops. Like this, I like this GIF because, uh, you know, it just keeps kind of spinning around over and over. Anyway, uh, does anyone have questions about this? Okay, so let's say uh, for Thursday, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna make a folder. I just want you to make a rotoscope animation piece. Uh, you can make it, maybe make a transparent version or, or a uh, version that has like a background to it. Or if you don't wanna do the line drawing part, do, uh, do like the paint dab style. So instead of you know going in there like that, you're you know, painting in, like, all this area. Even if you kind of did it sloppy, like, uh, it doesn't look that bad whenever you look at it frame by frame. I'll show you what I mean. So there's that part. I'll go here. Okay. So then, you know, it kind of mimics that movement. Last thing that we'll do before uh, we go is 
I just want to give you something to consider or think about uh, this next animation that you're going to do. This is one that I want it to be like more substantial, and it may end up just being your final. But uh, Miyazaki is like uh, one of the guys that we think of a lot as far as like quality of animation goes. Uh, his stuff uses reference too. Uh, so I want you to think about what kind of references you can do yourself that I want you to take. So uh, how can you set up a camera and videotape yourself doing something? But I want you to like think about a scene that you can do. Like this is a you know beautiful scene that repeats over and over. Same thing here. Doesn't necessarily have to be like calm or relaxing either because this is a little bit more you know energetic but uh you know just think about some things that you could do this is kind of a nice thing too you've got grass moving it's just sort of a wind thing even but think about it because i, I want to end up like making a, a painted background either an illustrator or photoshop and then uh using yourself rotoscoping it and then kind of introducing your character design too which it might not change that much, but uh, I just want you to be able to use yourself or a friend. Any uh, questions with that so far? Okay. Uh, so we'll meet on Thursday. You'll turn in like your rotoscope gifts and we'll briefly kind of talk about our next animation thing. And uh, then we'll kind of end it early. But I will uh, see you all on Thursday.